Okay, 21, 27, good luck. So we've not played before, we have no head-to-head -head score. 40,000 games for my opponent in Blitz, that's very impressive. About 6,000 for myself. What do we want to do? Well, let's just try and get castled like we normally do. Okay, let's go e6. Quite flexible, lots of options for both sides. Right now we can worry about how to play it, so we're probably going to take and develop. Do we want to do that? Um, I could sack a pawn with c5, takes, takes. Hmm, bit bold, a little bit bold. Let's go b6 first. It does take, I'll just take with the knight and drop back. Then maybe put the knight here and then the other knight across if we can. Or the bishop up, depends what he does because we want to deal with that annoying bishop. So am I blundering? Tread, tread. You just got to watch out for attacks on the rook, but I think it's fine. Well, attacks on the knight as well, but I've got a queen that I can defend the knight with and then push the pawn. Or maybe an early c5 now. So I've got queen across and the queen can't go here in one move, so... Let's bring the knight forward so we can maybe come here. Okay, we'll take. Now knight over now would be a bit of a mistake, I think. So where do I want to go? I think I'm just going to go here. If knight down, I'll just step up a bit further, but we're covering this square. Then the knight can maybe drop back. Let's just see how... White plays it, but both of us need to push one of our pawns at some point for the king to have an emergency square. Yeah, knight does come forward. So I'll step up, rook down, then maybe step back. Hmm, given a development move, aren't I? I could go right up then, I suppose. Pawn down, knight across. Yeah, let's go right up instead of here, just because we're given a free development move. This knight's going to jump across at some point, and this one... Back at some point, I would think. Maybe you've got this, but I can drop the knight back anywhere. At least I think I can. Actually, not. If you do that, no. You lose your knight, yeah. But I think we both need to push one of the H or G pawns, just so the king's got that bailout square to avoid the back rank mate issues. So it does indeed push, so I thought I could just drop back here. And then I've got the natural F6 square to jump to. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to keep this pawn, though, so that could end up settling the game. We'll just see. So probably this and this, this sort of concept. Knight comes forward. Okay. I'm just going to bring the rook across. Maybe kick this knight and then come back. It's just these two pawns are going to be very difficult to keep because the split. Again, knight over is a very natural move. Right, my pawn has gone for the g pawn. So I like knight over if takes, takes, and I've got a pawn push naturally done. Yeah, I don't think you're going to play f4 there. I think that's a bit bold. So I'll play the knight across. If knight down, I think I just shuffle the rook. Okay, takes. Now, I don't think it's realistic to take with the f pawn. Just goes against all the principles, so I'll stick to the good principles if I can. Now I could drop the knight back here and try and go pawn forward, but it feels like I'm going a little bit wrong. Here, if you ever push down, I just go back again. So it feels like a nice square here. It helps to guard the rook coming in. I mean, maybe you can push everything forward at some point, but otherwise I'm just going to try and push. It weakens d4, allows the knight to jump, but does create a threat. If the knight goes here, we can just push on immediately, I think. Or do I do this first and then back? But I'm not sure I actually want the knight there. No, I'm just going to push the pawn on. It weakens, this, obviously gives my opponent d4 for the knight, but if you do it, I think I'm just going to push straight on. Oh, it's come forward. Okay, so now I think I can just rook across. Well, the idea might be knight takes here and then here. Um, so have we managed to go slightly wrong there, miscalculating? I thought I was going across here, but knight takes across. Yeah, let's just go across and queen over.
Okay, the queen's come over, so it's actually looking at something more dangerous. So I don't want to burn all my clock, so I'm going to take the pawn. Oh, it's the exchange. That's what he was looking at. I just didn't pay attention. What the heck? What have I missed here? I didn't just play knight takes pawn. I've missed something here. What am I missing? What the heck is going on here? What have I missed? I just queen across. Hmm. It's very odd, isn't it? It's like my opponent has just imploded from a very good position. Very, very good. And then something's just gone wrong for them. Or they've seen ghosts or something or other. I mean, it happens to all of us. We all... Blunder, of course. Let's just see what the idea was, because I'm sure I was probably minus two or something there, if not worse. So they're the move times for both players. Now we'll request the analysis. But I must have been minus two or minus three or something. Then my opponent's just lost the mind or something, haven't they? Also, in this position, we've made a few mistakes, because white was better 1.5 than, yeah, 3.3. So... I've messed up a little bit there, and then my opponent has just lost the mind. <clears throat> they've, they think they've seen some sort of tactic. So in this position, we're slightly worse. Oh yeah, we've got the free pawn as well. We could have just taken a pawn. Queen takes, knight takes. Maybe you can take here, but... I was just trying to create activity, and I should have played rook up there to still guard. Knight takes, and presumably queen back. So 1.50, taking the pawn of course is a blunder because of the obvious knight takes and you hit the two, which I realised as soon as I made the move. Then I've just taken the knight. I mean, maybe just seeing ghost and not realise that the pawn was there. It could be simply something as simple as that. It's, well, very, very odd, isn't it? But we got the win, so the figures are 83% versus 63% accuracy, but it's obviously just been skewed by that one really bad move. The centre pawn lost 37 versus 54. So I'm rather lucky with that one.